It's official. Microsoft is killing Edge and rebuilding it using Google's Chromium project. This has huge implications for the web, the open source community, the Microsoft Store, the UWP platform, Chrome, Chrome OS, basically everything. So in the 41st episode of the Story Behind series, let me walk through all of those implications one by one. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first 500 students to use the link in the description below will get two months of premium access for free. Currently, the three big platforms, so Windows, Android, and iOS, all come with their own browsers that are built mostly in-house, meaning that the platform maker controls both their user interface and how these browsers actually render web pages, which is controlled by something called a rendering engine. And that's what Microsoft's announcement will change, because the first thing Microsoft has announced is that it is going to slowly phase out its own rendering engines, specifically Edge, HTML, and Chakra, and replace it with tech from Google's Chromium project, such as the Blink rendering engine and the V8 JavaScript engine. Microsoft will keep control over the user interface and extra features like Windows Hello login and so on, but this new version of Edge will even support Chrome extensions, apparently. Chromium, of course, powers Google Chrome, but since it is open source, it's also adopted by many other products like Opera, Vivaldi, Brave, and even app platforms like Electron, which is what a lot of new desktop apps like Spotify, the newer versions of Skype or Visual Studio Code are built on. Chromium is everywhere, and it's not news that one browser adopts another browser's engine. For example, Microsoft Edge on Android already uses Chromium stuff and all browsers on iOS are forced to use Apple tech from Safari. But this is the first time in a while where we see a major commercially developed operating system without a default browser that will not rely on its own in-house engine. And there's a lot more, but this by itself already has two huge implications. Edge itself will likely become a better browser for most people because Chromium has slightly superior compatibility with web standards and because developers used to not really optimize their sites for the old Edge with its tiny market share. But it also means that browsers that do not use the Chromium engine will have an even harder time going forward. The two big competitors are currently Firefox, which is my browser of choice, which uses its own, also open source engine called Gecko, and Apple's Safari, which uses WebKit. These two are now a part of an even smaller minority that fewer and fewer developers will test for. Okay, part two of the announcement is that Microsoft will start supporting and contributing to the Chromium open source project, so they're rumored to port over some of the better parts of Edge to Chromium, smoother scrolling, pinch to zoom, or reduced power consumption, for example. So that should overall lead to a better experience on all Chromium-based browsers, which is great, but I just can't help but wonder how exactly this collaboration will work on the long run. Like clearly Google's and Microsoft's objectives aren't exactly perfectly aligned, so there are bound to be fundamental disagreements between the two. Sure, Microsoft could always just decide to fork Chromium and make its own engine out of it if the disagreements are too big. After all, Chromium is just a fork of Apple's WebKit, so that would kind of make things go full circle. But uh, I don't imagine this being as smooth a process as Microsoft says it will be. Okay, part three is that this new browser will be decoupled from Windows 10. So the current Edge is part of Windows 10, meaning that it can't be downloaded and installed, it can't be uninstalled, it only gets updated when Windows gets updated, which is twice a year, and it's currently not available on older Windows versions. And this is changing. Just like Chrome, the new Edge will be downloadable to multiple platforms, including Windows 7 and 8.1, and even Mac OS, and it will receive more frequent updates. Now, I doubt that most macOS users or people who couldn't bother to upgrade to Windows 10 love Microsoft so much that they just can't wait to download a new browser from them. But there are two distinct groups of people that this announcement might be interesting for. Web developers, many of which use Mac, will now be able to test their web apps natively on Mac using Edge. And enterprise customers, many of which are stuck on Windows 7 or 8.1, who are not allowed to download uh, just a random browser from the internet, will finally get something newer than the ancient Internet Explorer. So overall, this is a net positive, I guess. Part four is that this new Edge is not a UWP or Universal Windows Platform app, and there are very strong rumors that it will not be distributed through the store. UWP, if you didn't know, is Microsoft's native app platform for Windows 10 that was supposed to be this huge thing that worked on Windows Phone and Xbox and HoloLens and whatnot. And while the old Edge was built on top of it, the new one will be built on top of the older Win32 platform. 
kind of understandable since that's just what Chromium uses and because older Windows platforms only support Win32, but yeah, it's not a good look. Together with multiple new key apps from Microsoft, like Teams, Visual Studio Code, and the new Skype that didn't go the UWP slash Microsoft Store route, this definitely shows that Microsoft has either significantly deprioritized or delayed its efforts to build a proper new app platform. And that's probably a good place to end the announcements and start exploring why Microsoft made the switch. The announcement post they wrote on GitHub would like you to believe that they switched because their love for an open source community was just too strong and they just couldn't contain it anymore. Uh, but of course that was more of a PR story than anything. Don't get me wrong, the new Microsoft does seem to love open source quite a bit, but they could have just open sourced Edge or decided to adopt Firefox's Gecko engine, which is truly open source and would have given Google Chrome some proper competition. Open source was a factor for sure, but not the main factor in my opinion. In fact, this was more than anything just a simple admission of defeat. Microsoft tried really hard to make Edge work, they poured resources into it, they made it actually a pretty decent browser, and it never really took off. So instead of continuing to build their own thing and burning money, I think they'll try to start influencing Chromium instead. Hear me out. Uh, historically, Google has been notoriously unwilling to support most Microsoft initiatives, like Windows Phone, like the UWP platform, like the Microsoft Store, like, you know, making their websites work in Edge, or, or more recently, Windows 10 on ARM. But now, Microsoft can just uh, gently nudge them into the right direction by contributing the right code to Chromium. Starting with ARM, it seems like Snapdragon processors are finally going to become viable for Windows 10 this year with the recently announced 8CX. Until now, one of the main things holding the platform back was that Chromium apps weren't native and had terrible performance in it. But now, with Microsoft's contributions, that will change. The new Edge, Chrome, Electron apps, they will all be running natively on ARM. Given that in a few years from now, I expect a big chunk of Windows devices to run ARM chips, I think this is hugely important for Windows. Similarly, I also wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft slowly tried to introduce UWP support to Chromium. In fact, some open source Google projects like WebRTC, for example, have been introduced to UWP, and I think there's more to come. Like, ever heard of Windows 10 Lite? It's the current codename of Microsoft's long-standing dream of building a version of Windows that doesn't have all the nasty legacy stuff Windows has been carrying around with it for decades. It would make things lighter, faster, more secure, by only running UWP apps and web apps. Kind of like Microsoft's take on a Chromebook. The problem is, the new Edge, which I suppose will be a huge part of this new OS, is neither of those things. It's a Win32 app, so it couldn't actually run on this new platform. Unless, until then, Microsoft finds a way to turn it into a UWP app. And that would mean that in the future, conveniently, Chromium browsers and all Electron apps could also easily become native UWP apps if they wanted to. Look, I bet that Microsoft would have preferred to have its own successful UWP browser that the masses adopted and loved. But since that failed, the next logical business decision is to adopt this popular thing that everyone uses, Chromium, and to slowly turn it into something that Microsoft can benefit from. And we'll see how much Google will let them get away with. If you are excited about the future of Edge, there's a link to joining the Edge Insider program in the description below. But if you're worried that Chromium is becoming a little too dominant or you just want to try out something else, I actually recommend using Firefox. It's become really good lately and it is not controlled by any huge corporation. Now, I've been missing from YouTube for about two months from now because I've been doing some web development. I can't wait to show you guys what I'm building. I think you guys are gonna love it. But if you are like me and you want to build something really cool yourself, take a look at Skillshare. They have over 20,000 classes on not just software development, but also graphic design, photography, marketing, whatever you can think of. And I'd recommend this really nice beginner's guide to Ruby on Rails, which is the framework I've learned. So to start learning, click on the link below. The first 500 to sign up will get two months for free. And using that link really helps my channel out as well.